air jet cooling, Neuralink trials, Tesla Optimus robot and much more. Welcome to MOSFET Weekly, the simple technology news update. As always, all source links are in the description. Starting with a lot of electronics news this week, and Zotac has unveiled an interesting new product. The Zbox PI430 AJ is a mini PC which claims to be the first consumer product to use Frore's Airjet solid state cooling chips instead of fans or passive heat sinks. As we covered at the beginning of the year when they were first announced, the small Airjet active cooling chips have no moving parts, are silent and apparently outperform fans. Every chip has a cavity filled with vibrating membranes and this vibration creates back pressure which pulls air through holes in the top of the chip at 200 km per hour, which in turn hits a copper heat spreader and cools the processor. PC World created an informative video review of the mini PC, saying that it reduces thermal throttling compared to Zotac's previous model by quite a bit, though this early version seems to draw a decent amount of power in comparison. If power efficiency continues to be improved, this technology could be a game changer for all range of consumer electronics, like laptops, single board computers, cameras, VR headsets, and perhaps could eventually lead to silent 3D printers. In other news, this week Neuralink announced they have been granted FDA approval to begin human clinical trials for their brain interfaces. In a Twitter post they state, this is the result of incredible work by the Neuralink team in close collaboration with the FDA and represents an important first step that will one day allow our technology to help many people. The company says they will announce more information on how to potentially apply for these trials soon. Interesting times indeed. Samsung has been busy lately and at the recent SID Display Week event in LA, the company showed off a range of new product prototypes. The first was another display which continues the trend of rollable and flexible OLED displays currently happening in the industry. Named the Rollable Flex, this display is very similar to the one from Hyundai I showed a few weeks back, though this one can change from 49mm high, rolling out to over 2.5m. The company also showed off a new sensor OLED display which senses anywhere on the screen. They say the type of sensors like the ones used in smartphones are currently added to displays via a separate module, whereas this one is integrated directly into the screen, allowing for sensing anywhere on the panel, with multi-finger tracking for things like blood pressure measurements, heart monitors and fingerprint sensing. Continuing with the Samsung news, and its display division also recently announced the acquisition of Imogene, a leading producer of AMOLED micro displays, for $218 million. This may signal their increased move into the realms of VR and AR, as earlier this year, Imogene announced their new direct patterning display technology, which allows for incredibly bright OLED micro displays, which when compared to other VR headsets currently available, are approximately five or six times more luminous. In other news, Sightful announced an interesting computer which integrates augmented reality glasses directly. The laptop-like system, dubbed the Spacetop, is basically a headless computer, replacing a standard display with AR glasses, which they say looks like a 100-inch screen in front of you. There isn't much more information, though an early access version of the device costs $2,000 and is available to 1,000 early adopters through their website. Continuing the trend of virtual reality increasingly being used in work training, HTX Labs was recently awarded a new contract with the US Air Force, expanding their service which trains airmen in various mission and role specific ways using their Impact VR platform. Delivery company UPS also announced they're adding 20 more sites around the US to train their staff. This includes using both virtual reality and a full-size truck sim to mimic standard operations a driver may encounter, as well as these weird shoes which simulate walking on icy surfaces. Even though some of these kinds of simulations aren't super realistic, I wonder if seeing them in 3D and physically acting them out does something to the brain to increase learning compared to textbooks, videos and demonstrations. And rounding out this section, Big Screen uploaded a teardown video for their tiny virtual reality headset, the Beyond. If you want to see just how they managed to shrink the size down compared to other headsets, check it out. YouTuber Supercar Blondie recently uploaded a video showing what it's like to fly the Hexa single-person human-sized drone. 
What's interesting is that the aircraft is classed as an ultralight, so no pilot's license is required, and anyone with an hour's training can learn to fly one of these. According to their website, the Hexa can fly for up to 15 minutes per charge, at up to 63 miles per hour airspeed, and is intended to fly either 700 or 1200 feet above ground level. There's currently a waiting list for those interested, but at almost half a million dollars, it's obviously only available to a very small potential market. Would you fly one of these? Moving on to manufacturing and we have a couple interesting DIY projects. Hackster user Space for One posted a detailed overview of his Embroiderino project, which takes a plain sewing machine and transforms it into an automated embroiderer, allowing you to personalize everything made from fabric. This is achieved by combining the sewing machine with a plotter-like core XY frame and motor system. The whole thing uses Gerber files and runs on an Arduino Uno. The output quality from the demo is quite amazing and I look forward to seeing how this project develops. Hendrik on YouTube is also back again with another interesting video showing how to electroplate 3D prints, this time using colour metal to make a metallic pokeball. If you want to add high quality shiny metallic finishes to your prints, this thorough guide is the one to watch. And 3D Natives put together a very thorough list of metal 3D printer manufacturers, if you're curious about this trend. It's interesting to see all the various additive manufacturing technologies used, and although most of the printers listed are industrial sized, I suspect more consumer ones will be released in the near future. Deep Robotics has announced the launch in Europe of the newest version of its Light 3 robot dog. Aimed at researchers, this fairly small robot seems to have good dexterity and can jump and flip. It can also travel 5 kilometers on a single charge, carrying up to 7.5 kilogram loads, and has the ability to follow objects, avoid obstacles and autonomously navigate. Shipping of the quadruped bot will begin in September this year, and prices start from just under $3,000. In other robot dog news, Animal recently uploaded a short video showing their quadruped working whilst being fully submerged in water. According to the manufacturer, the bot is IP67 rated, so is completely protected against dust for extended periods, and can be fully immersed in water up to one meter deep for short periods. Useful info to know for the coming robot wars. At the recent Tesla shareholder meeting in Austin, Texas, Elon Musk showed off a new video of its Optimus humanoid work robot that's currently in development. There's not much further information here, though they did show the bot working both autonomously and teleoperated by a human. Musk mentioned that Tesla's engineers have had to develop almost everything from scratch, including motors and actuators, and that he eventually expects the bots to run off the same artificial intelligence system as the company's cars. Another general purpose humanoid work robot on the market is the Astra by Aptronic. Similar to the Sanctuary AI bot, this upper body robot can be remotely teleoperated and seems to have decent limb dexterity. I'm interested to see which industries begin to implement these robots first and for what specific tasks. Musk stated in that recent meeting that he thinks robots will make up the majority of Tesla's future value, so I'm curious to see how it all develops. I imagine once next level humanoid robots emerge it will turn the world upside down. And ending this week with some artificial intelligence news. After announcing its Firefly generative AI model a few months ago, Adobe has now added a new generative fill feature directly into the latest Photoshop beta, allowing users to quickly add, extend or remove content from images non-destructively using simple text prompts. I think this marks a new milestone in generative image AI technology as it makes high quality image generation and especially editing of existing work very easy for all users. I wonder what the direct short term impact of this will be on art and design related industries since so many people use Photoshop already. Alright that's it for this week, thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more subscribe to this channel or check out mosfet.net.